All right, hello class. Um, so we're actually at the final video here for this particular module. And um, after everything else you've been doing, this is probably going to be fairly painless compared to the other things. Um, this section is called Working with Taylor Series. And the book goes through a lot of um, ways that you could utilize Taylor Series to help you in, in certain situations. Um, but for me, I think the most important and what really sort of brings it all the way back around to the very beginning of this semester is that it can help us with, um, finding integrals of things that we don't have integral rules for. So, um, Taylor series... can help with really tough integrals. Okay, so let me give an example of how this works. Okay, let's talk about this function here. This integral, which is the integral of e to the negative x squared dx, has no antiderivative rule, right? This has no, and I'll say explicit, antiderivative rule. Right? We can't do a u substitution. There's actually no rule that we can utilize here to integrate this. And that's a problem because if you were to look at the graph of this, the graph of e to the negative x squared essentially makes the bell curve, which is really important in statistics. In fact, in statistics, they will shift this graph around and they'll look at the areas beneath the curve. And that will, you know, in statistics type problems, tell you what the probability uh, is of a, a certain thing. I believe these are called like z-scores or t-tests or something. I don't know. I'm not much of a statistician. So, um, but the area beneath this curve is what they calculate that with based on the normal distribution, based on the bell curve. It's based on the area. And the area is, you know, the definite integral of this thing shifted around. Well, if there's no integral rule for this, what do we do? Well, we can approximate using a Taylor series. So, there's no integral rule. However, e to the x equals this series here k going from 0 to infinity of x to the k all over k factorial, and this converges everywhere. All right? So this means that e to the negative x squared well, all I need to do is replace the x with the negative x squared like we did in the previous section. So I could take this to be negative x squared to the k all over k factorial, which would end up being k going from 0 to infinity of will be negative 1 to the k, right? The negative part will just become an oscillator or a alternator, I guess is what I really should call it, then times um, x to the 2k all over k factorial. All right, so this turns out that this really problematic function here, this e to the negative x squared, has a Taylor series that looks something like this. It's um, when we plug in the 0, we'll get 1. 
when we plug in 1, we'll get negative x squared over 1. So that will be negative x squared. When we plug in, um, so this was 0, 1. When we plug in 2, we'll get another positive. Then x to the 4th over 2. And the pattern continues in this way. It should be negative x to the 6th over 3 factorial plus x to the 8th over 4 factorial minus x to the 10th over 5 factorial, etc. Okay, so that means that using this, that the integral of e to the negative x squared dx, well, we can just integrate this series, right? It will be the integral of the series, k equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the k, x to the 2k all over k factorial. And we can just integrate this like we were doing in the previous uh, section. Or you can integrate it term by term here, the 1 minus x squared plus x to the 4th over 2 minus x6 over 3 factorial plus x to the 8th over 4 factorial, on and on and on. And at the very end, you could throw in your dx. Okay, so the integral of e to the negative x squared dx, well, I can integrate this, so it would be the series k going from 0 to infinity. Well, the constant doesn't change. That's still just negative 1 to the k. But now I'm going to take x to the 2k plus 1. Okay, and then divide the whole thing by 2k plus 1. So keep in mind, we still have that k factorial. So it'd be 2k plus 1 times k factorial. Okay, or we can just look at it in the term by term case. So when we integrate, we'll get x minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth over um, 5 times 2 minus x to the seventh over 7 times 3 factorial plus x to the ninth over 9 times 4 factorial. And see, it doesn't necessarily look pretty, but... This is the antiderivative of e to the negative x squared. We can't get an explicit form for it. I can't just say it's some function, but it does have a Taylor series or a series expansion. Okay, so, um, so while, say, e to the negative x squared has no explicit, say, nice antiderivative, it does have a series representation. And we can actually approximate definite integrals with this representation. So, and we can approximate definite integrals with this. Okay, so for example, the definite integral from 0 to 1 of e to the negative x squared dx will be approximately equal to the definite integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus x squared plus x to the 4th over 2 
minus x to the 6 over 3 factorial plus x to the 8 over 4 factorial dx. All right, so I just went out, um, used five terms here for my approximation. So notice I'm just saying it's approximately. I could get equals if I went out forever. Of course, that's not practical for actually getting a number out. However, if you had a computer do this for you, um, you could get out to, say, 100 terms fairly quickly. Um, now that we have the pattern, you could actually program that. Um, so this is going to be, again, we that should be a 9 there. I just realized that. Sorry about that. Um, so this is going to be x minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the 5th over, I'll go ahead and just write that as 10, minus x to the 7th over 7 times 3 factorial plus x to the 9th over 9 times 4 factorial. And I'm going to just evaluate that between 0 and 1 using the fundamental theorem of calculus. And thankfully, plugging in the 0, these all go to 0. Plugging in the 1, well, it's just 1 minus a third plus a tenth minus 1 over 7 times 3 factorial plus 1 over 9 times 4 factorial. Okay, so I'm going to plug that in my calculator and see what we get. All right, and I got that this is about 0. 0.6046. All right, so we've now taken something that before would be impossible to, you know, mess with and have actually found a way that we can approximate it. And if I need a closer approximation, I can always go out further. I could go out 10 terms and get a much closer approximation. All right, so let's look at another one. Let's approximate the definite integral from 0 to 0.2, the natural log of 1 plus x squared dx. So this is another one that we would really struggle to integrate this by hand. In fact, it might not even have an integral rule. However, we do have the series representation. Okay, so down here, um, I'll write what we did last time. We got um, this series for the natural law. All right, it was x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the 4th over 4 plus x to the 5th over 5 minus x to the 6th over 6, etc. Okay, so that means that I'll go out to x to the 6th, okay? Um, it, so it, it really depends on how close you want to get. Um, you know, if, if you're not close enough, just go out another term. Um, once you get the, the overall pattern, um, you can just, you know, take it out a few more steps. Because once you get the pattern sort of isolated, um, adding more terms really isn't uh, that big of a deal, really. So what we're going to be doing, though, is throwing x squared in. So this will be the integral from 0 to 0.2 of, it will be x squared minus, now it will be x squared squared over 2 plus x squared cubed over 3 minus x squared to the 4th over 4. plus x squared raised to the fifth over five minus x squared over to the sixth over six. And that should hopefully be everything. Okay, so I'm going to continue this part down here. All right, so this will be the definite integral from zero to point two of x squared minus, well x squared squared is x to the fourth, 
x squared cubed is x to the sixth. So that would be x to the sixth over three. Then minus x to the eighth over four plus x to the tenth over five minus x to the twelfth over six. All right, so that looks kind of familiar. All right, then we'll integrate and get, this will be, let me write it like this, x cubed over 3 minus x to the fifth over 10 plus x to the seventh over 21, All right, minus x to the ninth over 36. And I'm going, I'm putting these in the denominators because I don't have factorials down here. All right, then, um, plus x to the 11th over 55 minus x to the 13th over 13 times 6, which is 78. All right, and we'll evaluate this from 0 to 0.2. The 0.2 is really the only thing we'll plug in because the zeros will all go to 0, so it's really going to be 0.2 cubed over 3 minus 0.2 to the 5th over 10 plus 0.2 raised to the 7 over 21 minus 0.2 raised to the 9th over 36 plus 0.2 to the 11th over 55 minus 0.2 to the 13th over 78. Whew. Okay. So I'm going to plug this in my calculator and see what we get. All right, so I got 0 0.00263526223. All right, I took it out really far um, just so I could be accurate, hopefully accurate to um, a lot of decimal places. All right, so I think this is the biggest boon. While this might seem like a pain, it's better than trying to integrate this. However, it's enough of a pain that you wouldn't want to do this for a function that you know how to integrate, right? If, it, if you know it's a particular rule, like a u substitution, you definitely wouldn't want to go through this process. However, it does help us in situations where, say, doing it the long way might be impossible, it's really the only option we have. All right, now one of the last things I really like to show in this particular module is um, linking these three series together here. So um, we have that the series of e to the x is of course your typical, our prototypical um, power series, Taylor series, because it it really is the the nice representation of them. Um, but as we've seen previously, that cosine is based or very similar to e to the x. In fact, it's just the alternating even terms, right? The alternating even terms, whereas the sine are the alternating odd terms. So is there a way to relate e to the x to sine of x and cosine of x? Well, there should be. However, we can't just add them because if we were to just add them, um, sine x plus cosine x, you'd get all the terms, but you'd get a strange thing where you'd get 1 plus x minus x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3 factorial. Then you'd get two pluses, so you'd plus plus um, plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial um, plus x to the fifth over five factorial, and then a minus minus plus plus minus minus. And you can't just subtract them either because subtracting them um, still doesn't get you 
to E. Okay, so we can't do it this way. So, and we can't do it with just normal, um, normal algebraic things that you might think, like um, adding or subtracting, multiplying, that kind of thing. Um, so is there actually a way that we can relate these two things? And the answer is yes, but we need I. And if you remember, I is the imaginary number, the square root of negative 1. And here's why. Because, um, of course, I is square root of negative 1. This makes I squared equal to negative 1. Right, because when you square both sides here, you get negative 1. And so this makes I cubed equal to, well, you take your I squared, which is negative 1, and then multiply another I, so you get negative I. Then I to the fourth. Well, now you multiply in, this will be basically I cubed times I, so it'll be negative I times I. So it'll be negative I squared, but I squared is negative 1, so we're at 1. Then I to the fifth is going to be, um, well, I to the fourth times I. Well, I to the fourth was 1, so this will be 1 times I, so we're back to I again. Okay, so to write it in a bit more compact sense, you basically have I which is, of course, i, i squared, which is negative 1, i cubed, which is negative i, i to the fourth, which is 1, then i to the fifth, which is back to being i, which makes i to the sixth, negative 1, i to the seventh, negative i, and i to the eighth, back to 1 again. So that means I, uh, I to the 9 will be I, I to the 10 will be negative 1, I to the 11th will be negative I, and I to the 12th will be back to 1 again. So multiples of 4 get you back to 1, even powers are either plus or minus 1. So i to an even power is going to be plus or minus 1, depending on what it is. Okay, If it's a multiple of 4, it's positive 1. If it's not, it's negative 1. So positive when the power is a multiple of 4. Okay, and then when the power is odd, you get plus or minus i. All right, so, and, you know, that one just alternates. It goes positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay, and they all sort of alternate. Okay, so here's where we're going to use this. All right, so we're going to utilize this and plug i times x into e to the x. And we're going to plug that in to its um, Taylor series. All right, so the 1 won't change. Then it will be ix, okay? It will be plus ix squared over 2. And it will be ix cubed over 3 factorial. Then it will be i x to the fourth over four factorial. Then i x to the fifth over five factorial plus, and I'm going to put as many as I can here. I to the i x to the six over six factorial. I x to the seven over seven factorial. And maybe I can fit in 
pi x to the 8 over 8 factorial, and it will just keep on from there. Okay, I probably could have um, not put so much space here, but, you know, whatever. Okay, so the 1 doesn't change, the i, x doesn't change. However, now, this, i squared is negative 1, so this is going to become not plus, but it will be minus x squared over 2. Okay, and the i actually disappears. Now, here i x cubed, well, i cubed is negative i, so this will be negative i times x cubed over 3 factorial. Okay, then i to the fourth, well, i to the fourth, that becomes 1. So i x to the fourth will be 1 times x to the fourth, so it would just be plus x to the fourth over 5 factorial. Okay. Then i to the 6, well i to the 6 is negative 1, so this will be negative x to the 6th over 6 factorial. All right, then i to the 7 is negative i, so it will be plus but will be minus i, x to the 7 over 7 factorial. Then 8, we get back to 1 again. Okay. And if I had, let me go one step further, because here, if I had the 9, it'd be i x to the 9 over 9 factorial, and i to the 9th is i, so i to the 9th will get to i, so I have i x to the 9th over 9 factorial, since I have the room for it. Okay, now, this is actually much closer to what our worry was before. I have a plus, plus, minus, minus, plus. Uh, what did I do there? I skipped to the fifth power, didn't I? Um, I to the fifth, sorry about that. I to the fifth is I, so this piece will become... Um, just plus i x to the fifth over five, then minus x to the sixth over six factorial, plus i, there we go. Sorry about that. Okay, so we get plus plus minus minus, plus plus minus, and yeah, sorry, that's minus i, not plus i, minus minus, plus plus, then we'll get minus minus plus plus, and I'm going to shift everything so I have the, the non-i pieces together and the i pieces together. So this will be um, 1 minus x squared over 2. Um, God, I'm really messing this up today, aren't I? All right, so it'll be 1 minus x squared over 2 plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial plus x to the 8 over 8 factorial, and it will continue from there. And then down here, I'll do the i pieces. That's i x minus i x cubed over 3 factorial, plus i x to the 5th over 5 factorial, minus i x to the 7 over 7 factorial, plus i x to the 9 over 9 factorial, and that will continue. And this piece up here is cosine. This piece here, I can factor out the i. Instead of writing the whole thing again, this will be i times x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial minus x to the 7th over 7 factorial, plus x to the 9th over 9 factorial. Well, that, that is the series for sine. This is the series for cosine. Turns out this comes out to be cosine of x minus i times sine of x. So the answer 
is actually, yes, we can relate these two thanks to the series that e to the i x is equal to cosine of x, uh, sorry, plus i sine of x. Okay, this is called Euler's formula. Okay, I use the same guy that E is named after. Um, and it gives us a nice way to relate E to cosine and sine. In order to do it nicely, though, we had to introduce um, a complex number, right? We had to introduce the imaginary root or the imaginary uh, unit. Um, but honestly, this is still a really nice... Um, a really nice formula here. In fact, you may have seen this before, but a, a, another thing you may have seen before is if we plug pi in for our x, right, e to the pi i or e to the i pi, it's going to be cosine pi plus i times sine pi. Well, this goes to zero, this is negative one. Now if I were to move that over, so this you may have seen before. That e to the pi i or i pi is equal to negative one. Um, so whenever we talk about solving an exponential equation, um, we always say that e to the x is positive, and it is for real numbers. Okay, so when you're trying to solve e to the x equals zero, there's no solution, right? Um, so the the things that make e to some power negative are actually imaginary numbers, right? Complex number numbers can cause that to happen, but real numbers can't. Now, if we move this over, this negative 1 over, you get e to the i pi plus 1 is equal to 0. And this is often called, some people call this like the most beautiful equation in the world or the most beautiful formula in, in mathematics. And it's because it actually relates all of our most important constants together. This gives us a formula that relates 0, one of our most important constants, to 1, one of our other most important constants, to e, i, and pi. Right? So this actually incorporates all of our favorite constants all in one um, compact equation. Okay, And we were able to establish this basically from our series. Okay, so I always like to show that at the end of uh, Calculus 2. Um, I think it's a fun little diversion to kind of show what can actually be done with Taylor series and just series in general. Okay, um, so that should definitely be enough to get you rolling, and um, I will catch you all on the next one. Cheers!